In this video now we're going to create a title block in our new master. So we have our layout here, we have our master layout here. Now the way that these work is we draw our title block information or we import our title block information onto our masters and then whatever we draw or represent in our master file that will be represented in each of the layouts. But we can't grab it, we can't relate to it, we can't edit it in our layout, it's just visible. So we have to be very thoughtful about whatever we put onto our master because it will be visible on all of the layouts that relate to it. So when we're creating our title block, we have to think about what we're going to see, how we're going to see it. This is an A1 drawing and the idea is when we fold up an A1 drawing in order to make and a four drawing, we're dividing in four. So I'm just starting to draw now and explain this, but I'm not being very thorough with what I'm doing. So I'll just do a couple more lines and then I'll start to explain what I am trying to achieve. So what I'm doing at the moment is just dividing this page in four and there's multiple ways that we can do this. I'm probably not doing it the most efficient way, but I'm getting to a point. So once we've drawn this, if I was to fold this A4 drawing up, the one that would be the front page would be this area here. So then in terms of creating a, a title block, we could have a vertical title block that goes that way or a horizontal title block that goes that way. But the most important information needs to be here. And it could be in that right-hand corner because we're obviously reading in this case from right to left in terms of order of priority. Now I would recommend that if you're doing an A1 drawing you've probably got enough empty space on the page that you could do a vertical title block but if you're doing an A3 drawing you would probably do a landscape title block because at an A3 scale you're probably going to need as much width as you can possibly get on a page and because we're setting up this A1 drawing so it can also be turned into an A3 drawing therefore I'm going to show you how to do a landscape title block instead. So we can get rid of all this other information if we want. And in fact, I'm going to start to show you what we need to do to use the drawing tools. Now, the other purpose of this video is to show you some 2D tools. So we're going to start with the most basic of all of those, and that's the line tool. How does the line tool work? Whenever we select a tool from our toolbox on this left-hand side, it opens up more settings for us to choose from in our info box. Now if we click on this line here, that will also take us into that info box and give us more choices from what we can do to edit that line. Our choice therefore is to edit the line, line type, pen weight, choosing to put an arrow on it, and the layer of the line we can choose that before we start drawing, or we can choose that after we start drawing. It really doesn't make a difference. Of course, if we draw and then edit, we have to be thoughtful that we're changing all of them, not just changing one of them. Uh, and if we draw and then edit, it means that we won't necessarily still have that setting. So it's always best to make the change first if you know what it needs to be. Otherwise, you can change it later if necessary. Now, we could draw this as a single line. What, was, what does that mean? So if I wanted to click click, that's drawn one line. I'm going to go edit, undo. I could draw a box around this whole blue edge. What is this blue edge? That's our printable area, so our margin. I could do a chained line and that means click, 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 and either click to finish or click over here to close. So that allowed me to draw all the way around and I didn't need to start a new line each time it just continued on from where it was. I could use the option that's a rectangular so I could click once, click twice and that would draw it all in one go or finally I'm pressing control Z to undo by the way or I could use the rotated rectangular method where I click draw a line, click and then it will do an offset box, square, rectangle, whatever it is based on the original direction that I 
click. So four different methods of doing exactly the same thing, as in producing the same results, but obviously some are faster than others. Of course, we could also do that with another tool called a polyline, and very similar sort of idea. So this first method is polygonal, which is very much like our chained line, our rectangular, which is the same as the line, or our rotated rectangular, which is the same as the line. The difference between our polyline and our lines is once I've drawn it like this, it becomes one object, not four objects that are locked together or grouped together is the way that we would describe that in ARCHICAD, which means we can edit these more fluidly. So a polyline is very useful when we're drawing a, a multi-line or a closed shape like this is. Now I rushed through those. I didn't really explain how I was doing that. I just wanted to explain the logic behind it. So now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it more slowly this time. And just to be a little bit maybe more complicated, but to explain the rationale behind it, we're going to do one line at a time and explain how I'm doing this process. So in order to make this line straight, how do I do that? To go straight up, when I move my cursor or move my mouse and go up, there's a little blue dashed line behind. We call this a guideline. And when I hover over the guideline, you'll see that the little box beside my cursor called the tracker says that the angle is 90 degrees. So we therefore know 90 degrees is up the page. 0, 90, 180, and if I went down that would be 270, but in this case it's just saying 90 again. So if we go up, it's 90. Now, if I move slightly to the left or slightly to the right, it's going to go off that line. So to ensure that it stays on that line, I'm going to try to draw as straight as possible or move my cursor as straight as possible. Then I'm going to hold Shift. Once I've held Shift, I can now move my cursor away from that line, but it's still going to keep that line straight. As soon as I let go of Shift, it'll snap back to where I am. So I have to make sure I keep my finger on Shift. Now in order to draw this line straight, not only do I need to hold shift, but then I need to choose what I'm going to do. So I could either just left click on my mouse again to finish this line, or I could choose how long I want this line to be. Now something else that I'm going to do just for a bit of fun, is I'm not going to choose to draw this line as long as this blue box, but I'm going to make it slightly shorter. So instead of being 574, I'm going to make it 570. So in order to make this exactly 570, I'm not going to move my mouse until it says 570 and then click, because the reality is that that currently says 570, and it still says 570, but we can all see that I'm moving my mouse. So ARCHICAD in this case is only going to be accurate to the millimeter, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm drawing to the millimeter, if I'm guessing. So the way to do this correctly is to, while I'm holding Shift, press D, then I can let go of Shift. Now that allows me to enter a value, in this case 570, so I'm going to type that in, 570, D in this case stands for distance, I will press enter to finalize that. Now it looks like I'm a long, long way away from the edge of this line or the top of this line, so it looks like I'm wasting space, but the reality is when I zoom out, it's not very far at all. So one of the things we have to learn very soon when we're using CAD, any CAD, particularly ARCHICAD, is that we are drawing at a scale of one to one all the time, but we're representing at different scales often. Sometimes we'll be representing at one to one, but mostly we'll be representing at something more like one to one hundred. So we have to understand the actual representation of what we're doing, so the reality of it, but also how it will look when it's put on a page. Let's click again to start. Now, when I did that, when I hovered over the edge of the line, we see that the cursor changes to a tick, and that's how I know I'm over the edge. So I could zoom, 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 but even if I zoomed in far enough, I could potentially guess and not get it quite right. So I have to wait till my cursor changes to a tick, that's when I know I'm in exactly the right place. Now to draw a line horizontally, I'm going to use exactly the same process as before. I'm going to move to the left this time, and then once I'm Confident that I'm roughly in the right direction, I'm going to hold shift. That's going to lock me in. I could move my mouse up and down, it's not going to matter. And instead of drawing a line at 821, I'm going to do 820. So holding shift, press D or press R. R means the same thing. So R is for radius, D is for distance, but they both work. So I pressed R that time. 
820, enter, and we see that we've got a straight line. Now, again, to draw the next line, hover over until it turns to a tick. Move down the bottom of the page. This time I don't need to type in a distance. I can just go all the way to the bottom. And when I get to the bottom, holding shift, we see that it says 570. And we know that I'm at the bottom because my pen has changed from white to black. Click. And then finally, click. And click to finish. So that was obviously a much slower process. I took my time. That time, but we see that we've still drawn four lines, but we've been a little bit more deliberate or sp specific about how big that line is, and I did it very slow to explain the process to ensure that we're drawing straight. Now, we're not always going to have blue lines to copy or to trace, and so we need to learn how to draw accurately. So we've got a box around the printable area of our page. It's a nice line that's even, um, that's a, a rounded number, the lines are perpendicular, parallel, and we know that the angles are all 90 degrees on the inside. The next thing that we're going to do is to draw a box to describe our title block. So how far into our drawing do we want to go? We want to go 60 millimeters. Now how do I decide 60 millimeters? There's this little box up here, and this is offset constraint. So I can click that line. I'm now going to redraw that bottom line zoom in to make sure I don't go too far, click, go up, so it's allowing me to offset either down or up, basically in a perpendicular orientation to what I just drew, and now I can choose the distance, so I'm going to set that at 60, enter. So now I have a box down the bottom of my title block that's 60 millimeters high, and as long as my whole page, that's the start of our title block. I'm going to do just one more thing now. We're going to get a fill. We're going to use this same method, offset, and I'm going to trace over that box that I've got. Click, and now I'm going to allow it to come in. So you see when I'm using a fill, it's actually offsetting all of the sides, not just one of the sides, and I'm going to type in R5 enter and so now we have a box that's five millimeters smaller than the whole outside line now before I finish I'm going to delete that line you'll see that because I offset five that this box is now 50 millimeters and I'm going to round the edges or fillet the edges of this so I'm going to click on the fillet chamfer option I'm going to change that to five press OK now I'm going to select this fill and change it to empty fill so it's white on the inside. And so this is something that a lot of people would do for their title block. So the title block looks like it's more floating in the space. It has separation rather than bashing into other lines. So that's the end of this video. In the next video we'll have a look at what we could maybe add into this title block.